Yellow viewers, welcome once again to another episode of African Confessions HD right here on Extraordinary Africa. My name is Solution Uncle. If you're still new, in this show we publish uh, lifetime confessions. Usually we publish anonymously for their own safety reasons. It's video number two of two. If you have not yet watched the first video, make sure straight away after watching this one, you go straight there and watch it. It's a story of a lady who died for 10 minutes and woke up on their way to the mortuary. The nurses were pushing the bed to the, to the mortuary. Ah, oh, wonders, wonders in this world. Guys, I don't want to waste much of your time. Let's go straight into our three confessions, uh, for this afternoon. The first confession is as follows. Hello, uncle. Please hide my identity. I don't believe what I saw my husband doing. I still can't believe my eyes. My parents died some years ago. I was left staying with my paternal auntie. Auntie, you have other children from here, late siblings, plus your own children. We were seven people at that house. A donor funded our education. I failed to finish education just felt it was the right time to start working so that I can assist my auntie for the upkeep of my nephews and nieces I was staying with. After quitting school, I moved to Cape Town. I wanted to look for a job, but uh, it ended in, a, in an unexpected way. The job was very hard to find in town. I started suffering, sleeping in dry drainage bridges. This pushed me into prostitution. I started sleeping with men for money. At least I could buy my own food. So one day, I was in a nightclub. These other men hooked me. We agreed on prices and went to his place. The men had a very beautiful car. At the home, very beautiful house. He was divorced. The beauty of his assets raised my curiosity to a very high point. I just felt I want to know more about the man. He told me he was once a night shifter at this former company he once worked. One day he returned from work and noticed his wife in bed with someone. The two separated and shared properties. Till then she was surviving by sleeping with commercial sex workers. I also told you my story. We felt pity for each other. Strong feelings developed with days as we continued to meet at the nightclub. Later on, we started staying together. There is everything a lady might want at that house, but there are weird and harsh rules and the men act so weird sometimes. There are two rooms I am prohibited to enter. Sometimes you could spend a whole night inside. Every time she enter, he enters, he come back with bundles of money, United States dollars. There are two big cats comes out of that house sometimes. It's a must. He should be in the room at 12 midnight. One day, I pretended as if I was asleep and followed him. The cats were vomiting bundles of money. I quickly ran out. He discovered it and acted normal. I planned to run away one day. After packing my bags, I lied. I wanted to go for a weekend, but he rejected and told me that he knew I saw him doing his things. Because I know his secrets, he won't allow me to move again. I am not even allowed to go out of the house, I am indoors for months. Guys, what's your advice to me? The police is not a good option. He knew and he have pictures of me in robbery operation. I once worked with a crew of robbers. <laughs> thank you so much, my sister, for sharing such an uh, educative story. I'd like to thank you so much. Oh, Solution Uncle says it. Guys, we should do a proper background check before rushing into these marriages. We should do a proper background check. A proper background check is needed. We should put God first before going rushing into these relationships. 
we might end up in such situations. Also, we should be very straightforward people in life. Look at your story, my sister. I think you are saying, I can't report to the police because the man has pictures of me in a robbery operation. I was once a robber. I'm afraid if I report him to the police, he will report me. <laughs> Guys, we should be straightforward people. We should be straightforward people. Anyway, my sister, uh, we don't want to to feed you with bad uh, advices. We don't encourage you to fight with such any, uh, a dangerous person. What you need this time is to pray. Pray for yourself. Start fasting. Look for a God-fearing church. Some of these churches, you can be in a service online. You can join their services online. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. It doesn't matter of where are you praying from. So you need to fast and pray. Our God is very powerful. He will set you free. Believe me, believe solution, uncle. Guys, comment section. I want to hear your thoughts. Please, 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 please. I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts, guys. Okay. Without wasting much of your time, let's move into our next confession. Yellow admin, can you please hide my identity? I am a late aged 23. I grew up in a village near the capital city. My love for man started when I was still young. I stayed with my mother. She doesn't know who exactly was my father. So life was difficult. She had to make sure she put food on table on her own. She used to send me to steal at our neighbors. So she passed away when I was starting school. I moved to stay with my uncle, your brother, uh, in the city. Started going to school in Lusaka. And that's where I met a friend. We have similar behaviors. She loved money more than I do. And one day, suddenly, uh, stopped coming to school. After I finished two terms, she visited us at school. Came driving a brand new car. Everyone was like, wow, nice. How did you manage it? She said she was dating a top African singer. He was the one who brought it for her. She refused to disclose, but as close friends, I kept on convincing her till she told me one day that the guy came to see her uh, with his friend who is also a musician. The friend showed some interest in me. He might be 15 years older than me. But I liked him uh, for the sake of money. I didn't know I have put myself in fire. The new boyfriend gave me a ring. From that day, I traveled to oceans in spirit every night. Under that ocean, there is their queen. She calls herself the queen of the film. There are a lot of South African celebrities go there. They gave me a frog, so I feed it for my boyfriend to make hit songs. I used Jackson's to able to produce milk. Yes, he makes noise across the continent, but he doesn't care. A lot of girlfriends, he always threaten me. The process is irreversible. So other girls are dying. They gave me everything, cars, mansions, bodyguards and everything. But the frog is growing. Now it's sucking a lot of milk a day. About to fill a room. Now I'm afraid. I confessed. I know they are seeing it. Please God forgive me. This sister of us sent me a text message. A WhatsApp message, sorry. Last night. Mm, telling me that she is experiencing a huge punishment after that confession. A huge punishment after that confession. She said, if she, she eats 
food, the food won't go down into the stomach. She went to the provincial hospitals, private hospitals. They said the, the, the neck is okay, but they are failing uh, to, to find the, the root of the cause. It's been a month since she has not eaten something. She is surviving by tubes. <clears throat> My sister will be with you in prayers. We'll be with you in prayers. Guys, I want to hear your thoughts. Please, 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 please leave your thoughts. Thank you, my sister, for sharing an update. There are few people who came back here and updated us. Yellow Solution Uncle and Family, can you please hide my identity? I am a church leader from Peter Marisbeck. I want to share my story with South Africa and the world. I am from a poor background. We relied on government grants for a living, went to school but stopped in grade 9. Poverty forced me out. I felt that it was time to start hustling for a better living. I moved to Pretoria and started residing in the streets. After only staying for two months, I started to think going back home. Life was not easy in Pretoria. I decided that I should go back home, but I don't have money for the bus fare. One day at midnight, I went to a church which was near to where I was staying. Inside the church, there was a man who was praying. When I got inside, I was shocked to see a coffin in front of him. It was open and there was nothing inside. At that moment, I felt weak and fell down. Just to wake up the man scolding security guards, why did you allow him to enter? You are sleeping at work, this and that. That time, the coffin was no longer there. The man scolded me saying, who gave you the permission to enter these premises? I told him my problems. I just wanted to ask for money to go back home, but they didn't understood. Instead, they called the police telling them that I broke the window of the church and entered. By that time, they have also already broke the windows on their own. I cried thinking maybe they can change their minds. I was not, it was not helpful at all. In about 30 minutes time, the police came to arrest me. They lied to the police that I broke into the church with my friends, telling them that we stole 600,000 rands. I lied that my colleagues ran away with the money and they managed to catch me. I cried and cried, telling them what made me come to the church, but no one didn't understood. I went to the police car with one policeman. The other two left with the church leader and the security guard. I suspect that they were being bribed. They returned very aggressive. I was taken to the police station. The incident happened on a Saturday. I slept at the police station till Monday. On Monday afternoon, I appeared before the courts for the first time in my life. I was very dead. It has been six months before I bathed. It has been six months after I bathed. Since it was first time to appear before the courts, I was in panic. The magistrate thought I was mentally ill. She said I should get in remand for two weeks waiting to be tested by two or more medical doctors. It was a difficult time though. Life in remand is such is much better than life in the streets. The doctors came and tested me. They said I was okay. Appeared before the courts after two weeks and pleaded not guilty. I was then remanded in custody. For one month for case further police investigations. During those days in remand, the churchmen came to my dreams each and every day, threatening to kill me if I tell anyone about what I saw in his church. Prison officers even noticed that something was wrong in me, but there was nothing they could do. The day for the trial came, I was found guilty of unlawful entry and not guilt of stealing since there was no tangible evidence. I served a two-year jail sentence. 
Spiritually, I was suffering. The church leader also came to harass me. Shockingly, one of the days I was re- released on the day shockingly on the day I was released, I met the man when I was walking away from the prison. He sprayed me with white powder before I even do anything. I started to do as he said, got into his car and went to his mansion in Pretoria. From that day, I am his servant. We go to funerals, stealing dead people's brains. He used dead people's brains to prophesy. So we spent all our nights at graves hunting for fresh brains. The church is big in South Africa, in Namibia. Can you please help me? I want to be out of this. I never wished, but I'm afraid to be killed. He knows I know his secrets. Appointed me to be the high priest, but I don't like it. Thank you so much, my brother, who shared this story. I contacted this man last week when I was not feeling well. I asked him, are you still at that church? He said, yes. So, the story is still the same. He is seeking for advices. He want to be out of all this. So, guys, let's bring our hands together. I want to hear your thoughts, guys. Never leave without commenting. Yes, viewers, thank you so much. That was it for today. Let's meet tomorrow on a Monday. Hope you enjoyed the educative confessions. That was your solution, Uncle. Bye. Have a good day.